everybody. Just about ready to start the live show. This is Geek News Central. My name is Todd Cochran, coming to you from FEMA Region 5 in the new media production studio designed by Audimute.com in Coldwater, Michigan. The lead story, Tesla's $500 radio upgrade after you paid for another upgrade costing $2,500. Your Amazon Prime videos are really not yours. The big three get hauled in front of Congress. And NASA, in conjunction with some partners, primarily Google, produce a very, very cool International Space Station AR walkthrough in celebration of 20 years. I want to welcome you to episode 1,484 of the Geek News Central podcast for Thursday, October 29th. This show is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com and listeners just like you. Great deals from GoDaddy can be found at geeknesscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. You can support this show today at geeknewcentral.com forward slash insider. Hey, I want to give a warm, warm welcome to all the new listeners of the show. Thank you for being here. We want to make sure you get over to geeknewcentral.com. Check out all the great content on the website. We want you to get subscribed to the show. All you got to do is do that on the right-hand column of the website. You'll see it there, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., and, of course, you can subscribe to the newsletter when you're on the website as well. Go ahead and knock that out. That way you're fully connected with the show. You can also join our chat room at geeknews.chat or on our Discord channel. Those are linked. Geeknews.chat is the address. Discord link is on the website in the show notes. If you have comments on today's show, yes, you can contact me via email, geeknews at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at geeknews. I'm also on Facebook. Just search for me for Todd Cochran and friend me. Partner shows are all linked at geeknewscentral.com. That includes the new media show, The Gadget Professor, GNC Live, which we are right now, Podcast Legends, and the GNC Week in Review. The GNC Live page has a live stream of the YouTube place all the latest but uh, definitely check the website out this show of course is sponsored by the longest running continuous sponsor of podcasts that's our good friends at godaddy.com you can save lots of money by using my promo codes all you got to get do is go to geekingcentral.com and grab those we're at the end of the month so if you haven't used a promo code yet or shared one one shared one with a friend now is the time to do so again 30 percent off new product purchase at 499.com for new or transfer domains for new customers. That's a mouthful. We've got a dollar a month economy hosting for the first year with a free domain. Again, I got a dollar a month managed WordPress hosting for the first year. Dollar a month managed WordPress hosting for the first year with a free domain. 12 bucks gets you going. And man, I tell you, that's the best deal in the space. It really, really is. For those of you business owners, you may want to check out the free trial of GoDaddy website builder, your choice of personal business or business plus plans. You get a one month free trial on that. And you save lots of money by using my promo codes and you support a great show. It allowed me to keep the lights on, keep the rent paid, keep the electricity going. And now the gas bill. Because <laughs> I got the heat cranked up. So, uh, yeah, my latest insurance bill was $460 some dollars for the quarter. That just sucks. But that's what commercial insurance costs. So, yes, anytime you pick up a GoDaddy product or service, you can be assured it will go to a good cause to keep the show online. So hope everyone's doing well. I do have from the team on the Slack channel. And again, if you want to be part of the Slack channel, you do have to send an email to request to be on the Slack channel. But we have some new conspiracy theories before we get into what's been happening here. And uh, the team had a little fun with this. Christmas songs like I'll Be Home for Christmas and There's No Place Like Home for Holidays were bankrolled by the government discourage mass traveling in dangerous weather conditions which saved thousands of lives and millions of dollars. That's conspiracy theory number one. Conspiracy 
is theory number two. State police agencies intensely hire people to drive slow in the left lane, causing drivers to get frustrated and break traffic laws, thereby increasing ticket revenues. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. But you know, where I live, there's only sometimes two lanes and people drive ridiculously slow and they do that because they're farmers. <laughs> Conspiracy theory number three. Finally, the government hires people to make up and publicly post ridiculous conspiracy so that one so that when one is real, no one will believe it. <laughs> and my team that's on Slack said, uh, R.E. the last point. They do say that the government agencies rail against encryption, not because they can't crack the code, but rather to give the illusion that they can't get it in order to give criminals a false sense of security. <laughs> and then uh, another team member weighed in. The last minion, the way out the door, actively demolished the smith Munt Act. The law, that law forbade the dissemination of propaganda through the news to the American public. In addition, in the final National Defense Authorization Act, actively provided funding for an official government office of anti-propaganda propaganda. Oh, the last admin. The last admin on the way out of the door actively demolished the Smith Munt Act, the law that forbade the dissemination of propaganda through the news to the American public. In addition, in the final National Defense Authorization Act, actively provided funding for an official government office of anti propaganda propaganda. Hmm, where's that? So, anyway, the team was busy with conspiracy theories. And thoughts and, and uh, submissions. So what say you? Geeknews at gmail.com. Hey, the last show, whoo, touched a nerve. Touched a nerve. I got the most do not read this on the air emails. <laughs> I've ever received. I definitely cause all of you to get <laughs> get on your computers or your phones and fire me an email. I have, I think, one <laughs> email that was willing to be read on the air. Oh, my goodness. I just, uh, I, I thought it was funny. So we'll get to those at the end of the show. <laughs> and I'll see if I can trigger you some more. So this week's really been about presentations, 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 presentations. So much so that I had a little insomnia last night, got to sleep uh, probably about two. It wasn't too long. Tossed and turned. <laughs> I've got them all done. We had a train wreck for one this late this afternoon. What could bro break did. <laughs> um, next week on, uh, I only have one next week, Friday. And it's a big one. So I, I got to prepare for that. It's for the Spark uh, Christian Podcast Conference. I'm their keynote. So I have to plan to impress. So I got to get that presentation put together. And it'll be about the state of uh, podcasting. But it's getting colder and colder here. I did. I am not wearing my flannel shirt tonight. I did order some shirts from Amazon, um, you know, stylish long sleeve shirts. And, and I had to laugh because they all delivered today except for one. The post office said they tried to make delivery. <laughs> I'm scratching my head a little bit because the, there's not, it's not impossible to make a delivery. There was no signature needed, but I got to go to the post office and pick it up. I, I don't. I don't understand. I really don't. The, what the USPS could get wrong, they, they get wrong. And also, I, I'll be, I'm going to make a, a confession. The food options in my small little town that I live here, you know, I, I'm used to having sushi, Indian food, Asian food, just having this wide variety, Korean food, going to go, go get, foe whenever you want you know what whatever this you know the only thing we could never get in hawaii was really mexican food and the mexican food here is worse than the mexican food that was in honolulu and so i'm having a serious serious uh hankering for sushi and i know one place it's about 45 minutes away so i i'm tomorrow i'm going to go have sushi for for a dinner um it's you know but 
still, I got to drive 45 minutes to get it. It's, it's just the food options here is, I mean, I guess for a better word, small town America. Burgers, chicken, uh, some Mexican food, wings. There's, there's hardly, the Chinese place is still closed. They, they, ha, they haven't, uh, the Chinese buffet hasn't opened up for sit down. I refuse to go in and get served three or four options. You go to a buffet, you, you know, you get a nice smorgasbord of stuff. And, um, so it's, it's, it's bad. It really, really is. Um, the options, really, really the options here are just so limited and, um, uh, I've just got a bigger palate than that. So that's the thing. You know, I used to be going down to Columbus every other week. I could kind of get my fix because Columbus is, you know, got a wide range of, of food options. And uh, here it's just, whew, I, I'm, yeah, I'm severely cramped in my palate. Yeah, you want to get a good steak, no problem. You know, you can, get, you can get a good steak, get a prime rib somewhere. That's, you know, that's always an option. But, uh I don't know. My world travels in, in having access to different types of foods is uh, and got me hankering for some. But anyway, I was quit crying. <laughs> Small town living. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's it's. Sometimes it's a beauty. Sometimes it's well. You know, you got to drive. So, but luckily, I can drive at seventy miles an hour going someplace, not fifteen. So it does make it a bit enjoyable. I do not miss at all sitting in the traffic. And, you know, that was a topic that we discussed a lot here on the show before. <laughs> Three hours a day I was spent in my car. So from that perspective, the stress level is woo, way down. All right. Let's, uh, let's get in the stack. Kirk did a good job. Find some stuff. The first article tonight, I think it's going to maybe, you know, I've asked a number of, oh, and by the way, I think I knew who sent me a hard drive, but I've been meaning to say something for about a week, but I got a hard drive in the mail. Thank you very much. It, I, I think I recognize the handwriting on that hard drive. Hard to believe that I would, but my forensic self thinks I know who it came from. So, uh, that individual that sent me a hard drive, I do appreciate it. And also for the folks that have been still sending me DVDs and stuff. Thank you for sending DVDs. It's, it's, um, you know, we're going to pay it forward, um, for sure. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, the hard drive of goodies was fantastic. And it kind of relates to this article that I'm going to talk about. Your Amazon Prime videos don't actually belong to you. Now, I've made it a habit, and I don't know why, I just got started on that, and then not recently. But whenever I actually buy a movie, I buy it under my Apple account. I just, I don't know why I've chosen to buy movies there versus anywhere else, and I don't know if the rule applies there. But, you know, aside from being able to stream movies digitally, companies have also allowed us to publish, excuse me, publish, purchase digital copies of movies. But there lies an interesting legal question. Do these digital downloads mean that you own them? Do you own them? Well, according to Amazon, no, you don't. You don't own them. It seems that movies purchased through its prime video platform are actually not owned by the customer. Now, this stems from a lawsuit in which a certain Amanda Caudell sued Amazon for what she alleges is unfair competition and false advertising, where she also claims that Amazon secretly reserves the right to end consumers' access to content purchased through its prime video service. Now, pay attention, everyone. Amazon, on the other hand, argued that movies purchased through Prime Video are actually not owned by the customer and that they are essentially renting, renting the movies for an indefinite period of time, at least, now listen to this, at, at least until it is removed for whatever reason, such as license restrictions. 
according to Amazon attorney David Beardman, the most relevant agreement here, the Prime Video Terms of Use, is presented to consumers every time they buy digital content on Amazon Prime Video. These terms of use expressly state that the purchasers obtain only a limited license to view video content and that purchase content may become unavailable due to provider license restrictions or other reasons. We all are in this world now where very few of us own the physical media. I had collected in an incredible collection of music that was legally bought that I painstakingly over many, many years ripped it to MP3 and, or to an audio file, to a high definition audio file. And I had an incredible large single 12 inch radio collection and just on and on. I have the physical copies of that media. I own CDs. I own LPs. And I have folders of CDs with all that music in there that I own. That's mine. I can trade those CDs and give those CDs to other people. No problem. But we're now digital. And we've talked about this for years on this show. This show. What happens with your digital copies? And I'm, you know, I'm still a little hesitant to buy stuff. And what I buy is, you know, okay, what did I buy? I bought the Matrix. You know, I bought certain series, right? Of movies that are geek culture, stuff that I love to go back and rewatch on occasion, right? Some of the Marvel movies, it's just that kind of stuff, right? I don't own a physical DVD, which now many of you have been sending me DVDs. Thank you very much. But are we now in a point again where we have to really be concerned about having the physical media? Are you worried about that? Or you say, well, Todd, it's, it's going to be available. I'll just stream it. Well, maybe, right? So I don't know if Apple, I don't know if any of the other companies have the same policy. It's probably something we should look into that you're actually could lose your digital ownership. Now, if you lose your password and stuff like that, you're going to, Lose your content. By the way, if you're on watching on Facebook or YouTube, please say hello. Check in live, please. Thanks. So I can say hi back. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But if you've owned any, or if you purchase any full length movies on Amazon Prime, they don't actually belong to you. You're renting the actual full length movie. And you paid 20 bucks for it. So maybe... We should just go and buy the actual hard media, right? Buy the DVD, Blu-ray, whatever it may be. Well, the Senate hauled Zuckerberg, Dorsey, and uh, the guy from Google, I believe, into a hearing on Wednesday and berated them, as we would expect, yelled them about stuff that they did. And they're so big, they just basically, I think they just humor Congress. I don't think they, I, I think they show up because they're too big. They're just too big to be really affected. And, you know, you can only yell at these guys too much. Um, based upon what I've seen on the internet from that hearing and what I have read, it basically, they said, eh, yeah, we'll get back to you. We don't know. We don't know who we've censored. And it definitely rolls down to the president having me censored 80 sometimes and Joe Biden being censored zero times. And, you know, it, it, there's this whole thing going on. And um, we, uh, we know that they're basically following the script. But since Section 230 became law in 1996, the Internet has scaled up from something that perhaps 15% of used households could access to something that almost every teenager and adult has in their pockets. And those questions of scale 
really have changed our media and communication landscape. And both Dems and Republicans alike questions what Section 230 should look like going forward. For me, for my business, Section 230 is very, very critical for my business. But I honor Section 230 to the letter because we do not want to be aggregators or editors of content on our platform. And being a podcast host business owner, I've got I've got significant protection because of Section 230. And there's this big movement now to repeal Section 230. And I don't know what that's going to look like if they do. But censorship on the internet is a real thing. When you take censorship-related actions against the president, members of administration, a slew of conservatives, media outlets, outlets and groups, the trend is very clear. And they almost always over-censor. And using the word censor is really truly blocking content. And bias fact checkers, adding read labels or read more labels on why this tweet or post may not be right. And Senator Schatz from Hawaii, which I at one time had some respect for, said the hearing was a sham, and it's not. Because as I have found out, while many of us see the highly profiled Republican pieces being censored, we don't see other groups that are censored as well that I have had major exposure to. And it's not just Republicans. It's, 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 uh, it's lots of different groups. And um, so what happens with Section 230? And I'm sure there's some liberals out there that have been censored too, but it's it appears to be rare. And I'm sure there's cases, but again, it's become highly political. And uh, Congress isn't doing anything this year, but the fur over Section 230 is not going to end after November 3rd, no matter whose presidential term starts on January 20th. If you will remember... Democratic candidate for President Joe Biden has called for abolishing Section 230 entirely. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has indicated she is open to an overhaul of the law. So it doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat, something is going to happen in the next year. And I think what has happened here, personally, is that these groups have really gotten to a point where they have overstepped. They've overstepped. And now, because these big three have overstepped and determined that the American public and the world is not able to make their own educated advice or educated decisions on content, now we're all going to pay. It reminds me when I was in the Navy. We'd be on deployment with 40, 50 people. Have liberty. And one dumbass would go do something. Get drunk. Get in a fight. Get rolled up by the police. And then, for the next six months, we were all punished because of this, this one asshole. And it always burned me. That was, the, that was the Navy's reaction. One does wrong, you all burn. And then they even made it to the point where if you go out and you're with a group and you don't take care of that person that's being dumb, then you can be held legally responsible and taken to non-judicial punishment, to NJP, which may lead to captain's mass, court-martial, separations because I had to make sure you behaved. And if I didn't, 
I was as guilty as you misbehaving. That was the logic that they, that's how they still operate today. Sailors can't have any fun anymore. And they don't get me wrong. A drunk sailor getting arrested is not pretty. Just like a, a drunk non sailor is getting arrested is not pretty. But what we've got is we've got a elite group of three who really can't get out of their own way. Who, in my opinion, probably do not have a large diversity of opinions within their staffs. Probably diverse work group, but I don't know of diverse ideology. So now we're all going to pay. And it frankly makes me angry because Section 230 is very important to my business. They repeal Section 230. I have to really think about how I'm doing business. We might have to look at every piece of a content that is applied to be on our platform and decide, is it worth the risk of being sued? That would be very bad. All right, I'm going to move on here. What say you? What say you, ladies and gentlemen? Geeknews at gmail.com. Oh, we don't want to do that one. This one. Geeknews at gmail.com. Matter of fact, what's going on here? That thing is huge. For those of you that are watching the show, that logo got really big for some reason. So if you so watch the magic there, I just moved it, lowered it down. So I, I'm just, uh, I don't know. Time will tell. Well, on a more exciting note, hey, Google has marked the International Space Station's 20th anniversary with an AR walkthrough. And I'll be honest with you, the show's about 30 minutes late tonight and get started because I was playing with it. It's pretty fascinating. And if you're OCD, Eric, warning. If you are OCD, do not. Do not go through and look at this 20th anniversary AR walkthrough of the International Space Station. Don't do it. <laughs> Again, if you're OCD, this is not the video. To, or this is not the AR to, because I'm not OCD and I'm like, th th I would be like, very, I'm not OCD, but I see everything everywhere. I, I'm freaking out. I'm like, how do you stay organized with this mess? <laughs> how do you stay? I mean, stuff everywhere, cables everywhere. It's kind of sometimes Velcro to the wall, sometimes not, sometimes just wrapped. It's just like, my, oh my goodness! Um, it, it's when you see it, it's 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 the link of the day. <laughs> so this uh, this AR, all you got to do is go to artsandculture.google.com, search for ISS, select twenty years on the ISS, and scroll down to explore in three D. <laughs> and wait, and and you're, it's like being on Google Maps. It's kind of cool. So uh, anyway, have fun going through it. And you can really see <laughs> the Russians, their certain countries have certain colors. Like in Asia, some houses are very painted very bright. <laughs> and in Russia, stuff is very dingy. And they use greens and grays and really depressing colors. When I was in the Soviet section of the AR, I'm just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, bring some spray paint up and let me, oh my God, could they have picked more depressing colors? It just, it just, it just absolutely exudes Russia. Because <laughs> you can see the distinct difference between going from an American section to the Russian section. It just changes and it's so much rougher. Oh my gosh. It's, it just, you, you got to get her done, get her done with brute force and cheap paint. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, rush right over there. So this, I didn't know. 
earlier this year, Tesla started offering owners of the older Model S and Model X vehicles the options to upgrade their infotainment systems. It's a $2,500 upgrade. Purchasing gives them access to features found in the newer versions of the system, include YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, and Twitch streaming via Tesla Theater, as well as Tesla Arcade Games. While it won't affect users' access to internet radio and music streaming, listen to this, it removes their access to AM, FM, and Sirius XM radio. Hmm. Though the automaker will give the option back... For an additional five hundred dollars, so the twenty five hundred bucks they rip a bunch of stuff out, and the, in the for the five hundred, you get a tuner, a radio tuner. You get a radio upgrade. The option is to restore FM radio and Sirius XM only if they'd previously brought the twenty five hundred dollar infotainment upgrade. I did not know oh, AM. You can't get AM. No, it's impossible. No AM radio. So. I didn't know Tesla didn't come with AM and FM. Is this true? Is this true for modern Tesla owners? Someone in this audience has got a Tesla. Please tell me this is true. This this would make me even like Elon Musk even more. And it makes me laugh that Tesla owners have to pay 500 bucks to restore, at least in these older models, the FM radio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. If you work in hospital administration, if you're an IT guy, if you're the dude named Ben or the dude at dude, uh, the dude, uh, that's not the right way to say that. Or the lady named Burnett. If you're the, if you're the IT and yes, I know IT guys uh, referred to as Ben. I, sorry, but ransomware attacks on hospitals could soon surge. The FBI warns that cases continue to rise from the coronavirus pandemic or the China pandemic. Hackers are targeting healthcare systems. They are a hack it. Guess what they can do? They can demand money. When the city of Atlanta suffered a ransomware attack in 2018, it paid 2.6 million dollars to recover it, while the ransom itself was one fifth that amount at 25. Or 52,000 in Germany, a patient died because of a ransomware attack. In September, infected in September, infected the nearest hospital when she needed urgent medical care. Hmm. CISA, FBI, and HHS have credible information to an increased eminent cybercrime threat to U.S. hospitals and health care providers. Be forewarned. Verizon's 5G. Home is expanding to parts of Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, and San Jose. Verizon. I, I really want to use a dirty word to call, call you guys out. People in Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, and San Jose all have high-speed internet. I need 5G. Seven miles south of Quincy, Michigan. Not in Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, and San Jose. San Jose. The 5G home internet alternatives will soon be available in parts of 12 cities. Great. 50 bucks. Pricing for the 5G home internet service are at 50. For those that already have a Verizon wireless service or 70 if you're a non-Verizon customer. Come on. That's not serving rural America. That's serving density. It should be a law. NASA. NASA needs your help unloading items on the moon. This is called the Lunar Delivery Challenge. They are soliciting ideas on how to transport goods via rovers and unload them onto the moon's surface. So NASA's Artemis program wants to have astronauts on the moon by 2024. They need a sustainable base camp, act as a hub for scientific research, and serve as a base for a future exploration of Mars. And they want to deliver supplies and systems to the lunar surface. And they need help to figure out how to unload it all. So the Lunar Delivery Challenge launched on crowdsourcing platform HeroX with an available prize of $25,000. Here's the 
challenge. Payloads of varying mass and volume will be sent to the moon in one of several commercial landers. And once they arrive at the lunar south pole, they need to be unloaded. These landers will range in size depending on the program requirements. So ideally, the solution would be flexible enough to handle a variety of payloads being offloaded from a range of different vehicles. So you think about that. It's true. They're going to need trucks and unloaders and stuff to uh, unload the luggage in near zero gravity. Of course, the moon isn't zero gravity, but they're still going to need a way to unload stuff. The challenge is open to individuals, teams, and submission deadline of January 19th, 2021. Winners will be announced on March 16th. So there you go. If you're in logistics, this is the way to go. Here's going to be the toy of the year for Christmas. It's the RC Baby Yoda. Can can mirror cute moments from the Mandalorian. This thing actually moves around. I, I want one just for the for behind me. I want one of these just to put in the back. I don't know how much. It's a 12-inch. It's pretty big. The 12-inch RC Yoda costs $70 and also includes the Mythosar necklace. So, uh, pretty cool. 12 inches. Let's look. Oh, look at that. It, it, it's got a little remote control. Your kids can put it on their arm and it drives around. It raises its hand. Of course, this is a you know, this is from the commercial. I'm sure it's probably break in three minutes after you get it. But the RC Baby Yoda. Rods around your house like a 50-year-old toddler. So a uh, link will be in the show notes. Anybody wants to get that for Geek News Central for Christmas, fire it away. Tessa plans for dozens of new service centers. Report says they're going to put in a new service center every single week in 2021. 50 plus new locations. They don't have enough places to service cars, so they got to get that ramped up. If you don't know how to do it already, there's some instructions on how to properly clean and disinfect your Android phone. So, uh, and some stuff not to use, like compressed air. So I'll have that link up in the show notes for you to check out. Peacock Network hits 22 million users, but it's not clear how many people are paying. Comcast quarter third earnings reports show big internet gains, but there's been a lot of packaging. So this thing's been packaged and a lot of deals offered by a whole bunch of different people. So, um, but anyway, what did they say about the earnings? Company didn't say how many of the signups were for its free ad supported plan versus its more premium paid tiers. Comcast also boasts that Peacock has seen their expectations on engagement metrics, although it neglected to give much detail. The company also saw big success in broadband internet business last quarter, adding 633,000 new customers. Of course, everyone is working from home. And they took a big hit on theme park, of course. So uh, I don't feel bad for them. Windows Insider Build 20246 removes features amid roadmap questions. People are worried about the upcoming Windows build, the Windows Insider's dev build is worrying some who think Microsoft might skip the 21H2 build entirely, whatever that means. So uh, those of you that are following Windows builds directly, the PC World article will be for you in the show notes. Now, what would happen if you ordered a new phone from Amazon? It's an unlock phone that you can take to your care and have moved things over. What would you do if you opened up the box and your new phone was sitting in the carton out of its box? Check this out. Amazon is opening brand new Razor boxes to fold the phones for safer shipping. They say, we apologize if you see fingerprints on your device, but be assured this is a brand new device. It's safe to be shipped, not folded in its box. Why, why is Amazon opening the box and folding it? There's got to be some explanation. 
The razor was meant to be shipped in the unfolded position. However, to better protect the display, we folded your razor. It's safer, but may not look as elegant as we hope. We apologize if you see fingerprints on your device, but we assure you, your razor's brand new. In its box, it looks like that. What's the problem? Something hokey going on here. There's absolutely no reason there's, there's no reason they're doing this. I, I, I don't get it. I, I'd send it back. I, I would. I wouldn't trust it. If it's not got it's not in the manufacturing sealed container, that means it's tampered with. No, thank you. Don't care what they say. That means that phone has been tampered with. I can't even imagine. If I got an Apple Apple phone, iPhone, Samsung, any kind of phone, and I get the box, and it doesn't have its seals on it, and when I open it, it's not in the original packing, and I have to peel the plastic stuff off and all that, and... Eh. That's a tampered phone. It's something too, too, too weird there. The conspiracy theorist in myself comes out. I know all of us have had this situation happen. It happens more when we're on travel, right? What happens when you got to go pee and you don't know where to go pee? Or worse, you got to do number two. Well, oftentimes, you don't buy something, you can't use the restroom, right? There's a new app that helps gig workers find out where to go pee. <laughs> and as business tighten entry restrictions because of the pandemic, delivery and ride-sharing drivers are struggling more than ever to find a usable restroom. An app, play, an app playfully named The Wiz is trying to help, described as being developed by gig workers for gig workers. And Wiz is a bathroom finding app that is partnering with restaurants to provide uh, gig workers the information they need and where they can get some relief. So uh, I won't tell you what we do out here in the country. <laughs> It's never a problem in rural America to find a bathroom. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> There's always a cornfield. <laughs> oh, but anyway, when you're in the city, it can be a problem. TikTok parent ByteDance launches its first gadget in a big education push. This thing looks really Chinese. <laughs> I don't see many Americans buying this. It's a display with a light and you put your cell phone on it and basically it's got an app so that parents can see how their kids are doing on their homework when they're latchkey, when they're at home. The parent can communicate with their child. Now, knowing how some Asian countries are in education, I would see some helicopter parents in those countries probably buying this thing. But I don't see very many Americans buying this consumer hardware product, a smart light lamp with a display that, quote, unquote, is part of its education technology portfolio. It's got a camera on it. Do you really think? I don't know. The Dally Smart Lamp features a display camera and built-in digital assistant. The Dally Smart Lamp, which starts at $119, is aimed at school-going children who can use the device to finish their, their homework. The camera will enable parents to tutor their kids and check in remotely via... When you, do you have time to, to tutor your kids when you're at work? Many of you have turned into teachers already because your kids are at home and can't go back to school. God bless you. My son's doing his senior year, half of it, at home. 
because all of his friends are on the opposite schedule, so he doesn't get to hang out with his buds. I think his girlfriend's on the opposite schedule, too. Ah, weird. Hackers allegedly stole $2.3 million from the Wisconsin Republican Party. The party chairman says the FBI is investigating the hack. Should we not be surprised with all the money being spent? Google's one, Google One's, yes, that Google One service, Google O-N-E apostrophe S, two terabyte plus plans have added an Android VPN service, which is soon to be uh, debuted for iOS and Mac and Windows users. So anyway, you can enable a VPN with by Google One. Who does that run by? You going to trust a VPN being run by Google? <laughs> you, you really going to trust a VPN from Google? I use NordVPN. That's the VPN I use when I'm away from home, away from the office. When I'm in a grocery store, in a restaurant, I use NordVPN. That's the VPN I use. I don't use a VPN when I'm on my own Wi-Fi, but I do use a VPN anytime I'm out and about. Twitter shares sink amid slowing user growth and add uncertainty. Well, good. Twitter's re- reported earnings for third quarter on Thursday that beat analyst estimates on top and bottom lines, but it fell short of estimates on user growth. Twitter's been hounding my company to, to spend advertising money. They gave us... How many thousands in free advertising? A lot. We're going we're gonna to use it. It's free money. But they're really pushing companies like mine to spend money. We spend most of our ad budget on Facebook. That's where we promote posts and boost posts um, to get more exposure. Facebook, those losing users in the United States and Canada, the surge... Uh, Facebook saw at the start of the pandemic appears to be slowing down. So check this out. Are people waking up? The company has 196 million users in North America, down slightly from 198 million last quarter. I didn't know Facebook actually lost users. That to me is surprising. Did people die? Is that what happened? Because I don't think people just quit Facebook. Amazon reports 96.1 billion in quarter three 2020 revenue. Amazon Web Services up 29%, subscriptions up 33%, and other up 51%. So 96.1 billion net income, six point uh oh net income is six point three billion, and earnings per share of twelve dollars and thirty seven cents. Man, if you hold some Amazon stock, ding 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 ding, winner winner chicken dinner, compared to the seventy billion net income of and two point one billion earnings per share. Last year, this is Amazon's second full quarter during the coronavirus pandemic. Given the company's leadership position, online retail sales, they're knocking it out of the ballpark. Bezos said that Amazon had created 400,000 jobs this year alone. Some of those are gig workers, though. Amazon headcount jumped 28% to 876,800 employees in quarter two to 1,125,300 in quarter three. It grew 50% year over year. Amazing. Amazon Web Services had a 30% growth. And they think that was bad. So revenue up 37%, net income up 200%. AWS up 29%, subscriptions up 33%, other up 51%, North America sales up 39%, international sales up 37%. They're the new Walmart. And if you look at their growth rate, now I'm going to start reading some numbers. This is going to blow you away. Tell me that he has not created a, a printing machine. This is going to be starting from Q1 2017, and I'm going to walk up their revenue growth. 43, 42, 42, 45, 49, 49, 48, 45, 41, 37, 35, 34, 33, 29, 29. That's AWS growth quarter to quarter. Whew. 
what did uh, Bezos have to pay his ex-wife a hundred and some million dollars part of the divorce settlement? She should have asked for a billion. Apple records Apple reports record sixty four point seven billion dollars in revenue. MacBook sales off the chart. Analysts expected that Apple's revenue would be sixty three point seven. They reached sixty four oh four. Apple says it sold twenty six point four four billion in iPhones, nine point zero three two billion in Macs, and six point seven nine seven billion in iPads. Wearables, homes, and accessories, seven point eight six billion. Services, fourteen point five billion. They're up in every category. Despite the ongoing impacts of COVID-19, Apple CEO Tim Cook said Apple is in the midst of our most prolific product introduction period ever. And early response to all new products led by our first 5G enabled phone has been tremendously positive. These sales reports have no new iPhone sales in it. So stand by for Q4. Apple One subscription bundle launches on October 30th. Arcade, music TV, iCloud, and more. The individual plan, fourteen ninety five a month. Netflix, you got a Netflix plan? I do. It's raising the price of standard and premium plans. The standard plan now costs fourteen dollars, while the premium is eighteen. These costs, you will see your bill increase within the next two months. I've hardly watched any Netflix in the past six months. LinkedIn rolls out new job tools. To help job seekers amid coronavirus pandemic, Microsoft, which owns LinkedIn, estimates that 250 million jobs could be lost this year worldwide. That's an incredible number. 250 million jobs by this Chinese pandemic, this Chinese cause, Chinese developed, Chinese spread disease. Microsoft estimate 250 million jobs could be lost over this year. The COVID-19 pandemic has left more than 140 million out of work and another 1.6 billion at risk. Let us not forget who caused this. Let us not forget. Ample wraps up effort to build own search engine to rival Google. Whoa. A Financial Times report says there's growing evidence of Apple's effort to develop its own search engine. You know, one thing I'm being annoyed by Apple, and I'll like, hey, S-I-R-I, show me this destination. And then I'll be like, hey, get me directions. It'll show me the destination on a map. I say, get me directions to this destination, and it won't do it. It refuses. I have to, like, load maps up, type in what I'm looking for, find it, and hit start. I cannot get SIRI to give me a mapping location. It's driving me nuts. It's like it's done, gone stupid. It has gone stupid. The best region-free players for DVD or Blu-ray. Now, if you're changing, if you're trading DVDs and Blu-rays, you might need yourself one of these region-free players. And uh, there's a bunch of them on the market. You know that, right? The one, the Sony BDP S3200. That one is a hundred sixty-five dollars, and it's region-free. So I don't know if you're running against any region issues before, but uh, if you do, they are. DVD or Blu-ray players out there that will play any region. There's a new app out there to help you donate money, even if you're on a budget. A 13-year-old developer created an app that lets you watch ads in exchange for donating money to a cause of your choice. So uh, that's an interesting, interesting app. That you watch ads? <laughs> I'll pass on that one. Amazon Black Friday 2020, when it starts, shipping, deadline, sales, and best deals. Well, just had the Prime Day event. I spent zero on Prime Day. Zero. But Black Friday deals are going to be all the way through October and November. 
And they got lots of discounts. Nintendo Switch, Nick's Play, Fitbit, Samsung, Sony TVs, GBO speakers, Sony speakers, Bose headphones, Vava 4K projectors, Instapot dual minis, Anchor robot uh, uh, vacuums, Star Wars toys, on and on and on and on and on. Of course, all a list of Amazon stuff on sale, too. Um, if you want to save money, Black Friday's already underway. <laughs> Look up here in the show notes. This is getting ridiculous. Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra will have five rear cameras, according to a new leak. The Galaxy S21 Ultra could be a big upgrade over its predecessor in the camera department. Five cameras? We are some picture-taken maniacs, aren't we? Link will be in the show notes. T-Mobile's new streaming TV bundle makes a lot of sense. Don't call it disruptive, but T-Vision by T-Mobile was a meaningful attempt to make TV more flexible. Listen to this. They made me a fan. So they've broken out. For $40, you get NBC, ABC, Fox, Fox News, HLN, MSNBC, NBC, TNT, Nat Geo, USA, Cartoon, Disney Channel, Disney Junior. But then if you want sports, it's another tier. So you go up to 50 bucks to get sports. And then you want some Spanish channels and uh, like NFL stuff, more money. So they've got it tiered out here. So you don't have to buy sports. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. I'm going to definitely be checking this out. One caveat, T-Vision will carry local NBC stations nationwide in some markets may not only may only have local coverage from either ABC or Fox, not both. In those cases, T-Mobile will supply national feed from the missing station. With the $40 and up, live plans T-Mobile is including 100 hours of cloud DVR and the ability to watch on up to three devices at a time. For device support, T-Vision will work with Fire TV, Android TV, the new Chromecast with Google TV, Apple TV, iOS, and Android at launch. T-Mobile told CNET that it's working on Roku support. So uh, it's going to launch in mid-November. Might be a replacement for YouTube TV. Spotify. <sighs> Please stop using Spotify. Spotify surges past 300 million users after successful Russian launch. 320, oh, 320 million monthly active users and 144 million paid subscribers. Please cancel your Spotify subscription. Samsung profit surge as the world starts buying smartphones. So they had a huge, 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 huge quarter. $59 billion with $8.3 billion in profit. And uh, the Galaxy Note 20 and the new folding phone had stronger sales than they expected. So uh, everyone in the mobile is making money. Meanwhile, Verizon has a $50 Yahoo phone. I'm sure this thing's going to be fantastic. It's rebranded ZTE Blade A3 with lots of pre-installed apps. A $50. A $50 phone. As part of the new Yahoo Mobile NVNO that launched back in March, Verizon is selling a new Yahoo phone for 50 bucks with a very purple 90s back. Okay. Now the moment you've been waiting for. And let me uh, open up the right email address. Our email account. Excuse me. Uh, right. So. Oh, what the heck happened here? Oh, I got two emails. We'll start with the, let's see, what's today's date? Today's the 23rd. Um, actually, no, I cannot read that email. Huh. All right, I can read this one. And Rob has sent me EV major battery issues. Let me load this and see what it is. Owners of all-electric Nissan Leaf frustrated by difficulty of getting new battery. <laughs> the 2013 Leaf can't reach drive range. It hadn't was new since a British Columbia car owner. Uh, I know another Ford vehicle that's having challenges too. So apparently people are having trouble getting batteries. Wow. 
And of course, we all know electric vehicles lose their, their battery charge. And this is part of the problem. Do not, if you own a Nissan, Ford, or any of these, don't buy. You buy Tesla, that's okay. But most of these EV vehicles, I, I'd lease them. I wouldn't keep them more than three years. I, I wouldn't. That's based upon that, that Nissan that Shoko turned in. Luckily, we did it three years because these batteries just start falling off a cliff. You want a new battery? $5,000 if you can get one. The key is if you can get one. He said instead of being able to drive 120 kilometers that the 2000 Leaf can initially go on, he can't get much further than 80. And he's even been kind of hesitant about turning on the heat or window defroster since using these features require battery power and reduces driving range even further. And he didn't think this was going to be a problem getting a new one. But he can't find one. He's tried two nearby Nissan dealerships, three local repair shops, and contacted Nissan Canada. Nissan hasn't been helpful. I've sent probably sent six emails to them. They keep telling me to go to the dealership. Call my local dealership, and they sent emails to Nissan six weeks later, and they've gotten a response. Both dealerships told him that a new battery, if he can find one, could cost him at least $15,000 which would be more than he paid for the vehicle in the first place. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. You're screwed if you have one of these Leafs. So uh, anyway, uh, yes. And for those of you that sent me emails based upon my commentary from the last show that I can't, that you asked me not to read on the show, it's pretty bad when people are scared to, have me not read their emails. Show, shows you where we're at in America today, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So we will have a show next Monday because the fireworks don't start until Tuesday. So we'll have a show on Monday, just as scheduled, the day before the big day. And uh, if you haven't voted already, many of you can early vote. Uh, I'm going to get up very early on the 3rd and go and vote at my local township voting hall. Um, but uh, anyway, Monday the 2nd, regular show. And that week will be fine unless uh, everything's on fire. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, it's kind of weird. My schedule, I, I purposely am not booking appointments on Wednesday the 4th. And because I figure what's going to happen is half the country or all the country is going to be really pissed off. As a matter of fact, I actually, thinking about not booking meetings on the 5th, I, I have a lot of meetings Monday the 2nd, but none, to th uh, none they're going doing none the 3rd. And only in internal company meetings. And then the fourth, I'm doing no client meetings whatsoever I'm because it's if, if you are on the losing side and I'm doing a call with you, you're, you're going to be pissed and you're not going to want to talk. You're not going to do business. And it's not just going to be positive. So I, I'm thinking next week is going to be, from a business standpoint, pretty bad. There's going to be some people joyful. Well, maybe not. Maybe this is going to drag on for a couple of weeks. I don't know. Because what? You don't have to have your ballot in in, in uh, Pennsylvania until the 12th or something like that. So how can they even declare a winner unless it's a blowout? So who knows? But uh can't buy any ammo right now. Ammo is sold out. It's sold out. That's just scary as all get out, to be honest with you. Okay, so if you've been hanging out, watching the live show, thanks for hanging out, watching the live show. Thanks for being here. Again, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Definitely support the sponsor, GoDaddy, at geeknewscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. If you like the shows, like what I've been presenting, we definitely want you to consider becoming an insider at geeknewscentral.com forward slash insider. Contribution started a measly 6.7 cents a day. I, I hope I'm worth seven cents. <laughs> Two bucks a month. All right. Two, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars. 
get started on the $2 plan. If everyone started on the $2 plan, it'd be life-changing. It really would. <laughs> it would. It would be life-changing. So consider becoming an insider at geeknesscentral.com forward slash insider. Thank you all for uh, being here. S stay subscribed. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Stay away from the mainstream media. Make sure your amygdala is not uh, being damaged. So everyone take care. We'll see you next time here. Bye-bye.